Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now on a recent video, I showed you when I unboxed this, set it up and used it for the first time. This is the Afero Laser 1. It's a smaller laser. I think they call it their mini laser. And when I used it for the first time, I just engraved and cut a real small test pattern. But really the thing I was super excited about was besides sending me this to try out, they also sent me the rotary attachment to try out. And so I'm going to try that out with just this powder coated koozie cup. Now from your angle, it's probably hard to see, but when you put your cup, and I just use in this can, on the rotary tool, the blade is no longer, or the laser is no longer above it. So I'm going to have to find something to lift this up so that it's at the right height. Now before I do that though, I want to give a huge special shout out to the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Honestly, without his video talking about exactly how to set this up in the software, I don't know that I ever would have figured it out. His videos are to the point, very informative, very step-by-step. -step. I just love them. I've watched so many of his videos now and his channel is phenomenal. So if you want to stick around and see how this turns out for my first engrave, Keep watching the video. Now, in full disclosure, it's my first true engrave. I did use a can like this, and I actually just kind of did some test engraving on it. It's nothing that I'll use. I just didn't want to ruin an expensive blank when I could just use this little can to practice. Now, before I move on, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I do all kinds of different crafts. This is just one of many. If you do, then click the bell, select the all notification. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. So here's the software that I'm using with my laser. And this is Lightburn. Now I'm still using a trial version, but Lightburn works with a Mac and I use a Mac. So that's why I'm using this. And then there's a free software that you could just download with your machine. But to use that, you need a PC. Now I fumbled my way through figuring out how to use the software to connect my computer to my laser and have them communicate. And I relied very, very heavily on Lightburn's YouTube channel, the Louisiana Hobby Guy, which I already mentioned. And then I also watched a guy, his channel is called The Kenny Hack. And I watched one of his videos to figure out what settings I wanted to start with. And then I just dialed them in on my own. Now I'm recreating this, but basically I came over here I clicked on the A for text. I came onto my canvas and I wanted to use the font called blue. So I clicked on that font and then my husband has a group called 333. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just to engrave 333 on that black koozie can holder that I showed you. Now to select this, I'm going to go right up here. That selects it. You can tell it's selected because it's moving. And then you can either put your dimensions in here, you can have it locked or unlocked, or you can just drag it to the size you want it. Now in the settings, I think there's a way that you can change millimeters to inches. I haven't done that yet. So I just lived with the millimeters and converted those to inches. Now to get this to print right on my cup, I needed to turn it. And to do that, all I did was I rotated it using the handle. Now, as I'm making this video, I'm not connected to the laser. And so that's why it say it's waiting for a connection, but I'm going to go to my cuts and layers right now. This is on layer zero, zero, and your layers are down here also. So what you can do is you can just move this around to where you want it. And then to figure out where it would engrave, you click on this frame. And let me show you what it looks like when it frames. Basically, it takes the laser head over above your item and it makes a square or a rectangle around where it's going to engrave. Now for my settings, you go right here and instead of a line, I want it to be filled. So I want the whole thing to be engraved. Then by watching the Kenny hack, and it made a lot of sense when I watched it, Sometimes you'll watch people engraving on powder coated things and then what they engraved is still very black from the soot. He did a lot of different tests and he found that if he went really quickly, there was less time for that soot to be burnt back into the tumbler and it worked really well for him. So I ended up going all the way up. You click on that or double click on that. I ended up using, I know this sounds crazy, 
I used a speed of 9,000 and then I used 80% power. Now if you want two passes or three passes, you can change it here. I just did one pass. Then right up here, you can play a little movie of what's going to happen. So to see what this one would do, the one I'm doing now, I'd have to click play. And that's really fast. Let me slow that speed down so I can explain it. All right, so we'll start this over. And that red line, that's not the engraver or anything. That's just showing you the direction that the laser's taking. The black is showing you that that would be engraved. So I can speed that up a little bit. Now, the first time I used this laser, using this little preview saved me a lot because I just didn't have my settings right. And when I watched a movie of what was going to happen, I could see it wasn't right. So I could alter from there. All right, speed this up. This looks exactly the way I want it. So I can just say OK, or I can X out right here. I'm going to go ahead and click off that. Again, before I actually engrave this, I want to frame this a couple times, get my item exactly where I want it under the laser. Then once that's where I want it, I click start and the laser starts. Now always wear your safety goggles, have that shield on the laser head. Just don't take any risks with your eyes. All right, I'm going to move back over to the other camera and show you what happened on this first engrave. Now check out the high-tech way that I used to raise my laser. Once I had it at the right height, then I tried to place it directly over the middle of my can. Once I thought it was in the right spot, then I clicked the frame button, and the laser goes around the perimeter of whatever you're going to cut or to engrave. Now you can frame your object as many times as you need to. Once you feel like you're in the right place, then you're gonna click that start button and the engrave will begin. So I was comfortable with where it was and I went ahead and started my engrave. Now this is real time. I wanted you to see just how fast this goes. Now the entire process took just over seven minutes. Now that you see how it's working and how fast it's really going, let's go ahead and turn this up to super warp speed. Now it's hard to tell that those rollers are actually turning, but you can see the cup is turning, so we know they are. All right, I'll slow this back down to finish. Now I was really happy with this. Even before taking it off the rollers, I thought it looked great. I've seen so many videos where the soot was burned into the can or the cup, and it had to be scrubbed off with a magic eraser. This wasn't that bad. All right, let's go ahead and take this out and get a reality check, show you what it looks like. It's pretty nice. Now, I did go ahead and clean this off some because I could see just a little bit of black soot, but I was super happy with it. Now, if you've enjoyed the video or you found anything in it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And until my next one, bye-bye.